1803, we get to decide what it means. Then we're going to jump to 1930. And in 1930, you have a whole bunch of just bizarre cases. One of the most bizarre you've heard about, this Wickard versus Filburn. They started to regulate all kinds of things. Agricultural Adjustment Act. You had people in the Depression starving. And so what do we do? Let's plow the food under. That'll be a great idea, right? People are starving. Let's, let's plow the food under. Well, you had a, you had a guy that, that uh, and so what was happening, they said, this interstate commerce thing, they said, well, I'm just doing it in my state. Well, no, if, if all of you sell within your state, it could have an effect on interstate commerce. So even if you're selling to your neighbors in your community, that could have an effect on interstate commerce so we can regulate you. Well, then this, this farmer said, you know what? I'm just going to grow it and consume it for my own consumption, my own animals, my own family. I'm not even going to give it away. I'd like to, but I'm not going to do it. So he has 10 acres. He's growing it just for himself and his family. Federal government comes in and says, hey, you can't grow that much wheat. It's like, not doing interstate commerce. Take him to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court says, if everybody did what you're doing, it would have an effect on interstate commerce. We can regulate you too. Do you realize that for 400 years in this country, we taught children how to read from the Bible? Predated the Declaration of Independence, predated the, 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 the Constitution. For 400 years, we taught our children how to read from the Bible. In 1962, five judges said, no, that's not the way it works. 1963, they said, no, you can't pray in school. What are you thinking? You've only been doing that for 400 years. What's the matter with you people? It wasn't until 1979 we had a Department of Education and Department of Energy. Um, so what do we do about this? Let's, get, let's, let's cut to the chase with my friend here. We can do this. We, that, that's what we want to do sometimes, right? <laughs> oh, brother, I wish it was only that bad. Brother, I wish it was only that bad. Um, have you ever thought the thought, somebody ought to do something? Somebody ought to do something. That federal government, look what, somebody ought to do something. Look what's happening in my state. Somebody ought to do something. There ought to be a law. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful to be sitting in a room full of somebodies. Do you know what we know in Utah that, 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 that we're better at than almost anybody? I'm going to tell you about a concept called multi-level liberty. Do we know that better than anybody in Utah? Come on, you molest 10 of your friends, they molest 10 of their friends, on you go, right? We know that better than anybody. I don't see a room of 100 people here. I see a room of 10,000. Do you remember the Eddie Arnold song? I'm not going to sing it for you because I, I don't sing. My wife, my wife are here, she would. You know the song, don't you? Give me some men. Give me stout-hearted men who will fight for the right they adore. Give me 10 men. Give me stout-hearted men. I'll soon give you 10,000 more. That's where it starts. So where's the line? Where's the line? We drew that already. We may safely rely on our state legislatures to erect barriers against the encroachments of the national authority. We've never stood at that line. We, 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 we draw a line and say, we really mean it. Don't you cross that line. And then we go back here and say, don't you cross that line. You know what I mean. <laughs> We've been at this for 100 years. We can't expect to turn it around tomorrow. We've been learning that that, that is the checks and balances of our government. Our lawyers and our judges and our politicians and all of us. We can't get frustrated and upset with our politicians when they're only acting upon the knowledge that they have. If I went to my young friend right here and I said, dude, if you just be two feet taller, you need to be two feet taller right now. He's like, I'm trying. Not really. I am. I'm eating my Wheaties. What's that going to get us, right? We need to take our leaders and ourselves and our neighbors where they are and help them understand. Help them understand that that is what we're supposed to be. And not only that, this. That's where we're supposed to be. Because, in fact, here's what Madison had to say about it. He said, should an unwarrantable measure 
of the federal government be unpopular in particular states? We don't know about any of those, do we? An unwarrantable measure be unpopular in the particular states, which would seldom fail to be the case. Get this, or even a warrantable measure, even things they're allowed to do by the Constitution, which would sometimes be the case, the means of opposition to the states are powerful and at hand. The disquietude of the people, their repugnance and perhaps refusal to cooperate with the officers of the Union. We've seen a little bit of repugnance over the last couple of years, haven't we? You know those really mean, ferocious grandmas with signs that are, that are dangerous? And they, I know, can you, can you believe that? The frowns of the executive magistracy. We're going to task John with the homework of helping Governor Herbert work on his frowns. And then get this. The oh, he does it all the time. <laughs> this budget process, we're going to see some frowns. The embarrassments created by legislative devices, which would be added on such occasions, would pose in any state difficulties not to be despised. Message bills? Darn right they're message bills. It's our job. We swore an oath to be the external check. We swore an oath to do that. Let me tell you what we do. Here's, here's, here's a bill I have, I have uh, drafted and, and working it through. Um, it, 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 it's called the Federal Law Evaluation and Response Act. Um, in your business, you have contracts every, every now and then in your business. Somebody violates a contract, you immediately call Ken Ivory or some other lawyer and you sue him the next day, right? Not that Generally not that quickly. What do you do? Try to, work it out. Try to work it out. Maybe you send them a letter, right? And you say, hey, you know what? That paragraph 15 of that contract, we really meant that. That's material to our deal. That's very important to us. We meant that when we said that. Would you please get back to me and let me know in the next 20, 30 days what you intend to do about it because you've crossed that line here, 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 and here. What if they don't? Then you sue them, right? Maybe you have the attorney send the letter, right? Oftentimes what they'll do is say, hey, you know what? We need to sit down and talk about this, either a formal or informal mediation. We need to sit down and talk about this before this gets out of hand. That's what reasonable people do in our businesses, in employment matters, in things that we do. Now, what if you had 20 or 30 buddies that came with you, and they were involved in the thing, and they sent their letters, and they were coming to the mediation as well? What if you had some friends on the inside that were able to help you? We have in our state, you probably didn't know this, we have in our state under its 63C4101 is the statute, Constitutional Defense Council. Did you know we had that in Utah? We have a Constitutional Defense Council. Now, it's been kind of pigeonholed to deal with the school institutional trust lands. It hasn't gone beyond that. But what we're going to do with this legislation is wake it up. The first thing we do is we erect barriers at the constitutional line that Jefferson told us. Constitutional line. 18 powers, Article 1, Section 8, 18 powers, the rest of the document, the powers of the president, powers of the court. That's the line. That's the line. And so we actually establish that in our statute and say, here are the powers that were delegated to you, period, the end. That's all there is. George Washington said, the powers in the Constitution are sacredly obligatory upon all unless and until changed in the manner prescribed by the Constitution. Sacredly obligatory upon all. I'll stand with George Washington any day. That's what he said. So we draw the line first thing. Second thing we do is our Constitutional Defense Council now reviews and evaluates all federal action. Agency action, legislation, executive orders against that line. Now in, in addition, if they cross that line, we fire off the letter and say, hey, Mr. Salazar, you cross that line. We don't see anywhere in the document that gave you the authority to do that, and you've done this, 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 and this. Would you please let us know within whatever period of time what you intend to do about that, because this is serious to us. Now, oh, by the way, Madison tells us that, uh, he says, Ambi ambitious encroachments of the federal government on the authority of the state governments would not excite the opposition of a single state or a few states only. They would be signals of general alarm. Every government would espouse the common cause. A correspondence would be opened. Plans of resistance would be concerted. One spirit would animate the conduct of the whole. The same combinations, in short, would result from an apprehension of the federal as was produced by the dread of a foreign yoke. And unless the projected innovation should be voluntarily renounced, 
The same appeal to a trial of force would be made in the one case as it was made in the other. Let me translate that for you. He said, you know what? The federal government comes in here and exercises powers on Utah that we never delegated to it. It'd be the same thing as if China came in and invaded us. And we'd deal with it the same way. That's Federalist 46. Again, that was the benefit of the bargain. That's how serious it was to them. They said, you don't have to worry about this Constitution. You don't have to worry about this central government going the way that is the nature and disposition of all governments to amass unbridled power. You don't have to worry about that because look at the power you've, reta you've retained. So this, the, it, says, it says a correspondence would be open. Committees of correspondence were, was the remedy that they, that they used. And you would have a direct conduit with other state legislatures. We have things like ALEC and NCSL, these, these third party organizations where legislators meet and they have kind of advice and that sort of thing. Well, there's nothing to say that we can't have a conduit directly. And so when our Constitutional Defense Council is meeting, we have a conduit directly with other legislators. And so when we send our letter, we get five and 10 and 15 and 20 other letters coming at the same time. Hey, we really meant this. Now, because we're living in the age of hoping for change, right? <laughs> that's where we're living. That's, that's, those are the days we're in. We're going to expect, and we have a right to expect, that they're going to act in good faith. Do we not? What if they don't? Then we take the next step. Oh, by the way, while we're doing that, we call upon our federal delegation. We have the 17th Amendment, but big deal. That doesn't mean we can't call on our federal delegation to advise us of agency action, legislation, executive orders that cross the line. And that doesn't mean we can't call upon them when we send that letter to help run interference with those departments in Washington. Next step. Next step is we, we call it, they, 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 they blow that off. We're hoping for change and it doesn't pan out. They're not acting in good faith. Now we have much more information than we had before we started. We know exactly how we're dealing with each other, whether we're acting in good faith or not. We go to the next step. We sent the letter to you. 30 days, 45 days, whatever has gone by, we haven't seen any action from you. We would like you to receive an official delegation from the state of Utah so that we can sit down and talk about this before this goes any further. And oh, by the way, we've got 20 buddies that want to be part of that as well. We're still hoping for change, right? We're still hoping for change. Think of the power in the process. Do you guys have any idea out of 1,000 cases that are filed in court, how many go to trial? Two. Probably less than 10. It's about 1% of cases go to trial. Why? They work themselves out along the process for any number of reasons. For any number of reasons, there's power in the process. There's power in the process of 20 states standing at that line saying, we really mean it. Now, a wise man around town here said, uh, when performance is measured, performance improves. When performance is measured and reported, the rate of improvement increases dramatically. <laughs> That's what we're talking about. Measuring the performance against that line. Now, what if they still blow that off? If they still blow that off, the Constitutional Defense Council will report quarterly to the Government Ops Committee, Government Operations Committee, and annually to every legislator. Because, as James Madison said, our state legislatures will jealously and closely watch the operations of this government and be able to resist with more effect every assumption of power, get this, better than any power on earth can do. Better than the Supreme Court better than any power on earth can do because they are the sure guardians of the people's liberty. That's our job. That's why we swear that oath. 